Hello there, Cancers. Welcome to your reading. Um, I saw two messages, like images for you guys when I was shuffling the cards. Um, and I don't know if they're related, but um, I do see you um, at an event. So this is like, I don't know if it's like a sports bar or like a, a club or some place where there's a lot of people. There's like loud music, lot of, a lot of flashing lights. So it could be like a sporting event, but I feel like it's a nighttime scene. So I feel like, you know, you could be at a sports bar watching a, a game, watching a fight on the TV. So there's a lot of, there are drinks, there's dark lighting, there's also um, just lots of, you know, lights, mu loud music too. And I see you as a guy, he's dressed really nice, like he, he's wearing a nice, you know, chemise or a blouse or, I don't know, dress shirt. And, um, you know, nice dress shoes, a pair of uh, slacks, and um, you're, he, he's like punching something in his phone and he's talking to this woman. Um, it feels like there isn't that attraction, you know, but then I feel almost like this is a, um, it, it, it feels to me like you're meeting somebody who's like a, a work associate in a more social setting that's what it feels like to me so they're both talking back and forth they're taking down each other's contact information and they're both talking very excitedly about just um like catching up what's going on with you and you know what have you been up to and vice versa you're asking this person what's going on with you what have you been up to where are you now what city are you in so i feel like there's a lot of um just catching up energy with former colleagues, with colleagues, with old friends, with um, just people that you happen to run into. So then the scene ends and what I see is I see you driving in your car, leaving what seems like a parking garage. And then you're driving and suddenly you look up and you see somebody. I don't know what who you're seeing because I'm seeing you, but I don't know what you're looking at and who you're seeing. You see somebody and you honk your horn trying to get their attention. And then there's a car right behind you, so you can't exactly get out of your car and walk towards whoever it is that you're trying to get their attention. And so you feel this social pressure, I guess, to keep driving. Okay, so those are the two scenes that I saw. And um, I don't know if they're related. Like, I don't know if you you know, take somebody's contact information and then you drive away and then you see them again or if these are just separate people. But either way, um, when I saw the second image, I was thinking like social pressure, you know, the social pressure to do something. The social pressure which makes us feel obligated to do something. We want to stop our car, we want to get out of our car, we want to talk to somebody but there's that other car behind us and we don't want to inconvenience the other person. We don't want to block the, the road or the, the, you know, the, the path on the parking structure. And so you just keep moving. So you guys are really courteous. You guys are a very, very courteous sign. You have really good manners and you're very considerate and thoughtful of other people. So, I, I don't see a lot of cancers like you know going out of their way to be a jerk and to be mean to people or to be discourteous to people you guys are just you know you're very nice and you always put your best face forward when you're dealing with the public when you're dealing with other people and I also feel like a lot of the times it could be at the expense of your own emotional needs too so I want you to be a little bit careful of, of that and learning to just, you know, not succumb to social pressure, not feel like, um, don't let other people guilt trip you or don't let people um, in a tongue in cheek way tell you what you should do because, you know, inadvertently they might try to guilt trip you, they might try to manipulate a situation and they might make you feel obligated to do something or not do something that you want to do or not do. So just be wary of that. And we are headed into the holiday season. And so, you know, you're going to come into contact with a lot of people, a lot of people from your past, a lot of people that you, um, you're, you're going to be surrounded by a lot of people. And it's also shown up in this spread where there are a lot of people coming in. And when we deal with other people, we really need to, you know, put up firm boundaries. We really need to give our energies to the people that are able to reciprocate. And we also need to learn to 
hold back and, and kind of um, not let other people encroach upon our space and our free will, okay? So that's the first thing. Um, when I saw the first image, what I just felt was, you know, there's going to be a lot of catching up. A lot of like, what have you been up to? I haven't seen you in so long. So I, I see that element coming into the picture where you're going to be surrounded by a lot of people. And I feel like, you know, um, ideas for work, ideas for jobs, ideas for um, even projects like percolating. I, I see it bubbling and, and brewing around you. So the, the environment is very, very dynamic. And based on the spread, what I feel is um, I'm sensing... Some of you are being offered a job, a position, like even a promotion or even like a, a work project. And you're, you're really flattered. You're really, really flattered that this is coming into the picture, but you're not sure. You're questioning your skills and your competencies and your capabilities. And I feel like you are going to go ahead and accept the, the offer. But deep down, you're just like, I'm not really sure if I know enough about, you know, the, the, the subject in order to tackle this project or tackle this new role or tackle this new work or this new position. So I, I do see some reservation from your end about doing that. And then I also feel um, real estate, home, hotels, lodging, um, Issues regarding, you know, like a physical structure, like uh, where am I staying, where am I sleeping, uh, what furniture am I buying, um, cleaning the, the house and, and, you know, just the, those mundane things. Uh, working out the logistics when it comes to lodging, when it comes to, you know, um, my sanctuary, that's very, very important. You might have people coming to visit you. And so, for example, if you live in like a one bedroom apartment, you might have a group of people coming to visit you and you're just like, I want to make sure everyone is comfortable. So I need to get inflatable mattresses or sleeping bags or, you know, how am I going to accommodate all these people? So there's that element. And then I also feel as well um, travel and, and trips and itinerary and hotels and lodging and, and all of those things. Um, be a little bit careful. What I have here is the eight of wands. And I have the world, both are in the reverse position. So there's a need to revisit when it comes to travel plans, when it comes to lodging, when it comes to like um, connecting with somebody via some type of a swift message, like communication over text, over telephone, over emails, making sure that everything is squared away, making sure that everything is lined up or making sure that everything is confirmed before you can, you know, move forward. So I, I, I feel like there might be some travel delays. There might be some misunderstandings when it comes to where are we meeting, what time and what day exactly. Um, I, I feel like, I don't know if you're traveling by plane, but I feel like you're dealing, you're either going to be very jet lagged or you're dealing with somebody who's very jet lagged and they're losing track of time zones and time and dates and locations. So if they're traveling, uh, you know, um, over like like cross country, if they're traveling through different time zones, they're going to be a little bit confused when it comes to timing. So if they have like an overnight flight, then they're going to think like it's Thursday rather than Friday. So make sure you follow up and make sure you tell them, you know, like make sure you communicate and be thorough, be very thorough with your communication. Um, I'm also seeing somebody who is shooting you a lot of fast information. They're, they're, they, they need you to be decisive and they need you to make a, a decision. And I feel like you're dragging your feet. And I feel like it's real estate, home, lodging, accommodations, logistics related. So they might ask you, where do you want to stay? I'm going to book this. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to, you know, get this squared away. And then I feel like you don't respond to them for whatever reason and you put it off and then you forget so stay on top of communication check your emails check your spam try to respond to messages in a quick manner if you're not decided if they're asking you a, a yes or a no question and you don't know or if they're asking you something that that you don't know right off your your the top of your head you tell them 
And this is something I feel a lot of water signs need to learn to do. You tell them, um, I cannot make a decision right now. Let me get back to you. Um, you know, like, so for example, in the morning you're rushing for work and they're shooting you a lot of information and you're just like, I just woke up. I haven't had my coffee. I'm still, you know, groggy. Um, so you need to text them. I am in the office right now. I'm, I'm not going to be done with work until five. Let me get back to you bef uh, after 5 p.m., for example. So learning to be a little bit more direct and succinct with our communication when we are dealing with somebody so that they don't repeatedly ask us the same questions or they don't feel like you're avoiding or they don't feel, you know, so that they know where you are at. And I, I don't know why, but I feel like a lot of water signs, when you're forced to make a decision or when you, you are like dealing or communicating with somebody who makes uh, who's asking you to make a decision, it's really hard for you to make a decision. But then if you need more time, you have to specify and you have to ask for more time, okay? It is within your right, and I feel like they just want to know where you're at. They just want to know that you're not backing out of a situation, and they need to know exactly, you know, when they can get some type of an answer from you. That That's what I'm feeling. Um, I see you dealing with somebody who is going to be asking a lot of questions, a lot of questions. Um, So I, I feel like they're, once again, you know, if you're not able to answer, just tell them, I'll get back to you. Let me research on that. I'll get back to you. So it could be even in a work environment. And they're asking you about, you know, some case that you worked on like two months ago and you can't pull the information off the top of your head and then you don't respond. And, you know, it, it might reflect badly on your capabilities so then you have to tell them, you know, I'm working on, an, on another case right now. I'll be free in three hours and uh, I'll try to find the file in three hours and I'll get back to you. Okay, that's how we have to, to, to try to kind of uh, alter our communication for, you know, the next two weeks to avoid misunderstandings, to avoid to avoid worst case scenarios, I feel, to avoid confusion, to avoid delays, and to avoid worst case scenarios. So I, I feel like that would be really beneficial as you navigate through this energy. Um, so I, I see here an air sign, so an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. And this is somebody that you have known for a very, 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 very long time, very long time. Um, so I have here the Page of Swords. This is the Princess of Swords or the Page of Swords and the Knight of Swords, okay? When two court cards of the same suit shows up, it usually indicates the same person that you've known for a long time. You watch them grow. You have seen how they have developed. So this is somebody that is going to be very significant the next two weeks. And you kind of know each other in and out, like inside and out. You've been through a lot together. Um... What I'm feeling with this energy is they come in fast and they want some answers. They want some communication. They want some answers. And the fact that it spans the next two weeks from the 17th into the 31st means that there's going to be constant back and forth communication. And that's why we have to, you know, we have to be a little bit more definitive with our answers. If we're not able to come up with an answer, then we have to give them a time frame. You know, why don't we? Why don't you um, touch bases with me in in a week? Why don't you touch bases with me on the weekend when I'm free and I have some time to look this over? Okay, so I, I feel like that's going to alleviate a lot of the pressure and also alleviate a lot of just the confusion from the other person. Okay. Um, what I have in the middle of the spread here is I have the lovers in the reverse and I have the four of wands in the reverse. The lovers in the reverse can indicate really, really strong, you know, sexual attraction towards another person. 
um, but the the energy can be a little bit、um, jarring. Like it's、um, it's almost like this really intense chemistry, but it's an opposite to attract type of energy. It's like you love them but you hate them. You you can't live without them but can't live with them.、Um, when you communicate, there are misunderstandings. Okay, so I feel like、um, there's somebody like that in your life that you're very very attracted to, and I, I see some of you.、Um, I see some of you still working at this, still trying to you know blend things. And I do see some of you kind of、um, bending over backwards for this person, and if that is the case, I, I just see you bending over backwards for this person. It's almost like you really care about this person, and you know you're very attracted to this person. You really love this person. You're going out of your way to accommodate this person, and in a way, I feel almost like they—they they have this sense of entitlement. They have this sense of entitlement about them, and so I would urge you to, you know, really think about to whom you're pouring your energy, in what avenue you're pouring your energy, because I feel like the other person doesn't deserve it. I just feel like. I just feel like they're critical. I feel like they have this sense of entitlement. I feel like they don't really lift a finger, and they expect you to do all the work. And then I also feel they just—I'm、um, getting, you know, the the message. Like everything you do, it seems like it's not good enough for this person. It's like they turn their nose up at it. And if that's somebody that you're dealing with, you know, that's not really love. That's not really. They don't seem to me to be a very kind and appreciative type of a person, and so you know, once again, really assess your relationships and really assess if this is worth it.、Um, I'm also seeing for some of you, you have somebody that really, really loves you. They they really, really, really love you. And they want to give you the world, like they want to give you an offer. They want to give you the world. And what I have here is an Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn.、Um, and I feel almost like there are there are self esteem issues.、Um, so they want to give you the world, and you don't trust it one hundred percent. You, it, it's it's almost like. This is too good to be true. Why is this happening to me? I'm not deserving. I'm not worthy. What do they like about me? Can I really trust this person? So, a whole gamut of questions are running through your head, and all of it stems from your own sense of self worth. It's almost like you don't trust it because it's too good to be true. But then again, this person has never done anything. To make you doubt their intentions, this person doesn't have a mean bone in their body. It's not like they're doing this as a prank. It's not like they're. It's not like they're deceptive. They don't have anything on their track records that would indicate, you know, that they're deceitful or or not trusting. So there is some situation here where I feel like it's way too good to be true, and you don't really know. It's it's almost like thinking about worst case scenario, thinking that that we're not good enough, that we're not deserving, and so we don't know how to respond to this offer because it is self esteem issues. And so, look at somebody's track records. Look at their past interaction with you. Look at your past dealings with them. And that should tell you all you need to know about somebody's intentions. That should tell you all you need to know whether or not to give more of your energy, more of your effort, more of your time into a situation. Okay.、Um, so you have a lot of good things that are coming into the picture, and I also have as well. You know, once again, we are always going to deal with.、Um, I just feel like the the major focus is.、Um, 
try to deepen the communication. If you have a lot of communication that's coming in and your phone is constantly beeping or ringing or, you know, there are like a gazillion emails or text messages that you have to respond to, you have to read, that you have to, you know, re uh, reply. Um, if you are not able to respond right then and there, give the other person a time frame in which you can respond or in which they can follow up with you so that it eases the communication. Um, the best thing, this is something I've learned from uh, one of my professors. Um, he gets like hundreds of emails every day from students, from faculties, from, um, you know, as a job, of, as a part of his uh, duties. And what he, he says is, if I cannot respond to an email, so he goes through, you know, every day he shows up for work and he, he reads the first email. So he reads them in chronological order. And he says that as a rule of thumb, if he cannot respond to it in about one minute, if he feels like he cannot compose a response in one minute, then he moves on to the next. And then he knocks out all the ones that he can respond to in one minute and then goes back and then the next round is, if I cannot respond to it in five minutes, then he knocks all the ones that are he can respond to in five minutes. And then he goes through the third round. And those are the more complicated emails that might require, you know, 10, 15 minutes or more. And that's how he gets through his, that's his process. And I feel like this is a process that would be really helpful for you guys. Um, I especially it, see it being helpful with Pisces. So this might be, you know, something that you, you might need a process when it comes to just um, getting through the tasks, getting getting things done in an orderly manner and responding to people and responding to things in a timely manner, okay? To avoid confusion, to avoid missed opportunities, to avoid, once again, you know, you're in that car um, honking your horn trying to get somebody's attention and it's like missed opportunities. So that's what I feel um, would be helpful for the next two weeks. Um, I, I keep seeing this energy once again, like that missed opportunity. It's almost like it's sat in our inbox or it's sat in our text message and we don't respond right away. So then it just sat there, not responded to, and then the time pass or the expiration date pass or the opportunity just kind of passed us by. And so, you know, try to be a little bit more on top of grabbing new opportunities when they come in and they're gonna be coming in quite fast. And um, they're good opportunities too, coming in from good people. So I do see um, air sign energy, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, um, earth sign energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, if you're dealing with a an earth sign, this is an opportunity you don't want to pass up, okay? Because I feel like they're going to look elsewhere. If they feel like you're slow on the uptake, and you know earth signs in general are, are quite patient, and they're not impulsive. So when they do things, it's very, very deliberate. And so when they're coming in with something, communication or offer or, you know, whatever it is, love or work or business or just um, friendship. I do see a strong love vibe uh, when they do come in. Um, there, There's a shyness about them. They give 100%. And if you're not, if they feel like you're straddling the fence and not able to give them 100%, they're going to take their opportunities elsewhere. So it's like, I see somebody who's like once burned, twice shy. I'm not going to ask again. I've already asked and you didn't respond. So I'm not going to ask again. So it's somebody who does have a lot of pride, but it's the pride is masking the shyness. They're, they're fearful of rejection. And I feel everyone is to a certain extent fearful of rejection. And especially if they already, you know, if, if they come in like this, hard on their sleeves, pentacles in their hands, and just very sincere. And if this is not, this offer is not taken seriously, they're going to slink away and cower and protect their heart and, you know, possibly give it to another person. And so you have to be quick on the uptake and you have to, you know, respond, okay? Um... <clears throat> the air sign energy 
trust issues, okay? I don't know if it's from you to them or from them to you, but there's definitely um, trust issues, trust issues regarding relationships. And I see it more being regarding either a, a, a physical house, a dwelling, or a relationship that's quite significant. Like trust issues between the two, <clears throat> the two of you. But I feel almost like you're giving... I feel like some of you could be giving 100% of yourself to somebody who feels like they're not deserving as well. Or somebody could be doing that to you and you feel like you're not deserving. So either way, I feel like there will be communication breakthroughs coming into the picture to allow, you know, whoever that's dealing with these self-esteem issues to heal up. Um, I also see you want to be very, very careful about um, drinking and driving. Okay, be responsible because that did come through. And what I have here is the Four of Cups in the reverse. And he's looking a little bit forlorn and sad. And then I see as well next to the World card reverse, which is restriction when it comes to movement. So you wanna be a little bit careful when I see that appearing in tandem right next to each other. It can usually indicate some type of legal issues regarding uh, DUIs, regarding um, sobriety and and you know having your uh god forbid your driver's license taken away or your car impounded or you know just don't do that okay it's not worth it especially the hassle of the holiday season it's just not worth the hassle um so i hope the reading is helpful for you guys cancer and uh, i wish you the very very best happy holidays for those who are celebrating and uh just have a wonderful blessed okay and i'll see you back take care